<clears throat> is it ready to go, Robert? It is. A, you know what? It is. They're all set. The Facebook going yet for everybody on YouTube. We'll wait for the Facebook to get started before we go live. Well, let's go ahead and get it live. I hey, mean, welcome everybody to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday interview. Every Tuesday, nine o'clock. My goal is to put on the best sales meeting happening in the mortgage business. Today, I'm not going to be able to pull that off because sales staff is happening. So the best sales meeting in the mortgage business is happening right here, San Diego, California. We're recording live. I'm with Ryan Grant. What's up, dude? Hey, hey. Good, good, man. Good. Uh, so, so Ryan, I have interviewed you now. This will be the, be the fourth time, but this the, the third time live. Yep. And I have just gotten spectacular feedback. Some of the, the most respected, high volume, high value driven mortgage professionals are telling me that our interview is awesome. So thank you for making so much time to bring value. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. And uh, if you have not heard Ryan Grant before, my first interview was Art of Homeownership. I mean, I, I think it's, it's going to be very close to whether that's the best interview of 2019. I know it's going to be in the top five. Uh, I also interviewed him on leadership and team building. And today, the theme of the call is going to be how to be a black belt in mortgage advice. So, you know, what's a white belt loan officer? What's an orange belt? What's a black belt? Um, we're going to tell you our definition of that, and we're going to give you a roadmap to becoming a black belt. So, so Ryan, for anyone that hasn't heard you before, just tell them your market, you know, kind of volume you're doing, yeah. and then we'll get into the topic. Yeah, so I'm in Orange County, California. I work with Fairway Independent Board Company. We are um, roughly, my team will do probably close to $180 million in volume this year, and uh, we probably average about $150 million, obviously, this year without protection. Uh, our, our region that I oversee will do about $650 million this year, uh, and it is almost all because of the commitment we have to the consumer and the value that we offer to the customer, which helps us stand apart in this business, which is really hard to stand apart in. Uh, we are excited to uh, continue to dive down that path. Cool. So remember, guys, this is interactive. Some of you are watching it in Zoom. Some of you are watching it in Facebook Live. If you have questions live, we'll try to get to them live, and we promise we'll get to them. If you're watching the recording and you have questions after the fact, we'll make sure those get answered. So pop takeaways, pop questions, put them down below. So so let's get to the topic. Um, black belt and mortgage advice. Uh, how would you just in a minute or less define it? And then once you and I get into some of the content we created together around defining it, when you say that, what do you think? Yeah, so when I think black belt and mortgage advice, I think somebody who really understands holistic financial planning at a high level. And so we can't really tell a client or a family what they should do with their housing and how to structure their mortgage debt without really understanding every aspect of their financial plan. And that encompasses everything from generational wealth planning to retirement planning, estate planning, insurance. Um, so I'm not saying you need to be an expert in those areas. You just need to know what questions to ask. You need to know what to listen for. And then you need to be able to know how to give advice and plan around every scenario that you come across. And the questions you ask will absolutely separate you in the initial phone call. And they'll realize the guy I talked to before was a white belt. I mean, maybe he wasn't even practicing martial arts, right? But the guy I'm talking to now is definitely a black belt. He absolutely cares more about me because he's asking more for right Yeah, he's, he's more valuable. By the way, full disclosure, Lane is an actual black belt. Right? Yeah, yeah. Second degree black belt. Yeah. So I'm not going to mess with him today. <laughs> uh, so, so let me show a couple things on my screen just to set the table. And Robert, by the way, I do not have permissions to share my screen. If you could do something to get me permissions, I would appreciate that. Uh, if there's something I need to do, let me know what it is. Did you get that, Robert? Hang on, guys, let me just try to, well, I will figure this out in just a minute. Oh, so it says I can now. All right, so I can share my screen now. So I wanna, first of all, define what is a white belt. So a white belt and mortgage advice really isn't mortgage advice. It's it's mortgage, it's just you know, doing doing a transaction. So this is what being a white belt looks like. Um, hang on guys. 
boom. Uh, this is what being a white belt looks like. You quote interest rates, you know how to calculate monthly payments, and you know how to give cash to folks. You give a few worksheet, and your value proposition is, I can close the loans faster, I have better rates, I keep my promises, and, and your big financial planning question is, how long do you plan to live in your home? So what percentage of loan options do you think do that make? I think that's giving people too much credit. I don't think people even ask that question. I actually I think most people ask that. I did a, a, a survey where I called five different board companies as a secret shopper, and I wanted to figure out what our competition was doing, and I told each one of them in a different scenario. So, but one, I wanted to go from 30 to 15, one, I wanted to go from 15 to 30, one, I wanted to move up, one, I wanted to move down. And all five of them, without hesitation, said, great, we'd be happy to help you. Let's get started with your application. Not a single question. Right? And, and you did the secret shopping. So and I, I went on bank that. rate, and I called, you know, I called banks, and nobody cared if I knew what I was talking about. They, they, they made the assumption that I had all the answers. And why would you ever make that assumption? Because we don't teach financial literacy. We don't teach it about real estate. We don't teach any of this stuff in our society. So making the assumption that the consumer knows what they're doing or knows what they want is a bad assumption. Right. So you know, maybe a lot of people ask that question, but I would say call centers, bank rate, online, low rates, people that work at banks, they are probably not asking that question as much as they do. So, so there is a good point though. So if you are competing, and most of our community is referral-based local mortgage professional, and I think they do that. community will probably ask. Yeah, but it's a good point that you just made. If you're competing with online call center, call center lender, they probably didn't ask that. And at some point in time, you may want to shine a light on the fact. Did your loan officer even ask you that? Right. You know, uh, so, so let's go back to defining what an orange belt is. And we're going to, over the course of this conversation, define a, a black belt. So they deliver this. Now, almost every referral-based loan officer is still delivering a few worksheets. While the mortgage coach community of loan officers that are delivering this, graphs and charts, helping people self-educate, that is growing. It's still not the majority of the experience. Because here is what an orange belt is. And let's talk about this for a little bit. Is it's still doing the, the triangle of the transaction, but it's starting to build out a star of advice. And the, the two most important components to go from white belt to orange belt are cost over time. Showing different loans over different time horizons, because that's what families want. Yeah. That's what they need. And then showing different financial strategies, whether that's prepaying a mortgage or whether that's investing the difference. That really gets you to what I would just say, orange belt. Yeah. You rely on that? Yeah, I think, you know, you, you guys will probably all get the question a lot. You know, I'm thinking about adding more money every month to my, to my monthly payment. Should I do that? Uh, we get that on the post-closing call that I do with my clients. That's one of the most commonly asked questions is, you know, should I put more money towards the mortgage? And, you know, obviously we have to know how to answer that question. But people are thinking about that. You don't typically get the should I invest or should I pay down? Pay down. You kind of have to educate them about the two differences. But um, yes, I think that would be a step above just the basic. Cool. So let's keep peeling back the onion. And remember, guys, if you have questions, let us know what they are. This is this is where I really think if you're a referral-based local mortgage professional and you literally want to guarantee your future is brighter than the past, this is where it's at. It's where you go. And you take that position of the king of the castle. I am the captain of the wealth team. And you know, for those of you who are going, what is the wealth team? I have built out this slide. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't think you've seen this one yet, have you? I have not. Yeah. So, so you're the mortgage coach in the middle. WTC is wealth team captain. You got the realtor. And let's face it, we're all about helping people get access to homes. So let's put the realtor at the top of the star. Sure. And then, and then let's put the CPA and the financial advisor on the side. And then let's face it, families have insurance professionals, they have attorneys. And, and so I think that is the captain of the wealth team. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think that's great. I think just being the captain of the wealth team is all about mindset. Right? You, can't, you can't tell someone you're going to do that and not have the capability or not have it built into your system that you will. Because when most people think captain of the wealth team, they would default to financial advisor. Right. right? Because they deal with finances. It doesn't mean we need to be a financial advisor, but it means, it means we need to be very holistic and all encompassing in regards to real estate, finance, insurance, estate planning, and so on and so forth. And when we are the one who brings that information to them and is advocating them to go talk to those people and work with those people that we know, 
then we take that default position. Right. So, yeah, that was great. Yeah, and I, I really think you should look at yourself as the guy, the coach. I like the word coach. I've always loved that term. The most powerful people in my life have been coaches where they not only help me make good decisions, but they push me to do the right thing. Right. You know, which we'll get to challenger sale in a minute, yeah. which I think is, you know, further defining what a black belt mortgage device is. So let's talk about the value prop. And, you know, if you follow mortgage coach, you've probably seen this before. Um, but this this is a strip of a captain of wealth team where rather than position yourself as lowest price leader, I keep my promise, I close low in seven days. And I'm not saying there's not a time to have that transactional dialogue, but I say every single client, every single time, you're push, positioning yourself as more than that with the family. And this is a great script. My advice helps you build wealth with real estate faster by helping you make smarter mortgage decisions. And then I coach you over time to ensure you always achieve your goals based on your mortgage price. Anything you want to add to this in terms of just how you position yourself before the sale? Yeah, I think this is extremely important that the client knows that you're going to help them structure their financing appropriately. We had a client a couple months back that he was buying a $4 million property and was planning on putting $3 million down. And through our advice and guidance and our PCA showing them, hey, look, this is not the best idea. He ordered to put a million dollars down. And then we brought his financial planner in and had him show what would happen if he kept that $2 million dollars go through not getting the tax benefit or not getting the tax consequence of pulling that money out and then investment over time. Over 20 years, there was an $8 million differential in his net worth, right? So just something as simple as that on the front end. And then the consistency over long-term is what will keep people coming back to you proactively. It will keep people engaged with you at a high level. It will allow you into their life uh, in a way in which you can proactively help them. Um, we're just given debt we're done at the end of the transaction. So I want to add to that. I think that's a good case study, a good story. But but here's here's my belief, is that there are millions, the majority of families out there, um, they can't afford to have a financial planner. You know, so so to me, that's great. Like I had a financial planner, he had you. Sure. But what about the families that are buying a $100,000, a $200,000 home, and they barely qualify? Um, let's face it, they, they, they don't have enough capital to have a financial planner, but if you are a mortgage coach, they have you. So let's talk about some of the questions that you should ask every single family. And here's one, regardless of their fluency, you can ask families this question and really start being an advisor. How old would you like to be when your home is paid off? Now this family may just be happy to qualify for an FHA loan, but when you ask that question, one, you demonstrate that you care, and here's the deal. Most people will say, oh, I want to be, you know, 50, 55. They'll probably also say that no one's ever asked me that. I've never thought of that. Um, and then after they tell you how they want to be, ask, well, let's look at how you're going to be based off the loan you're getting or the loan that you have. And, and here's the deal. The majority of the time, there's a gap. They want to be 50, 55. They're going to be 60, 70. There's usually a five-year gap. So, so I would just push every mortgage professional out there, regardless of the fluency of the client, um, regardless of how easily they qualify for a home, ask questions, deliver advice that helps them deliver on the promise. Build wealth with real estate faster by making better mortgage decisions and then being a coach over time. Anything to add to that one? No, that's a great question. Uh, it's a question that gets people thinking long-term get them just off of monthly payment and they start realizing okay there's more to this than i'm really understanding uh, so that simple question alone will open up someone to more questions and more comments so we have a a, a a platform where we talk about 12 disruptive questions in the mortgage application process and we give these 12 disruptive questions to all, all the law offices in our region to help throw off people who think they know it all, right? So when someone just calls you, they want the lowest rate on care or anything else, we start asking our disruptive questions and it's amazing how much they open up at that point and they completely change the way that the conversation is, is directed. So uh, that question, I love that one. So guys, do you think we want to know what some of those disruptive questions are? So that's one thing I'm really clear on when I'm building out this black belt um, platform within mortgage coach, kind of like how to be a black belt mortgage device, questions matter. And so I don't know if you're going to give us all 12, but you give us some of those questions that are yeah. 
uh, disrupted slash black belt. Give us a couple right now. Yeah, so one of the questions we ask is from a tax perspective. We say, now, did your mortgage advisor, whoever you're speaking to, talk to you about potential tax savings? Did they talk to you about first time home buyer, MCC tax benefits? Or have they looked at all those scenarios and helped you really understand how to maximize your tax savings? The answer is 99.9% of the time going to be no. Right? It's did they talk to you about how they're going to help you save money on the purchase price of the home, how they're going to make you look like cash, how they help you get your offer accepted at a higher percentage? Uh, no, they didn't talk about that. Okay, did they talk about how it's going to work into your retirement plan as to when you want to retire and what your budget's going to look like or your liquidity position at retirement? No, they didn't ask me about that. So, I mean, the list kind of goes on and on. Uh, but when you start getting people to understand, yeah, there's just, I feel like I didn't get everything. I didn't get all the information I should have. Then they want it, right? I mean, as soon as someone knows there's something out there that they don't have, you know, it's the fear of missing out, right? That, that, that's a really powerful tool. So let's let's do this. I would love mortgage coach community. I want to build out literally after this call. What are some of the most important black belt questions as a mortgage advisor you should ask? You know, they delineate you from an average LO, transactional LO, to a mortgage advisor. Clearly, you know how long you think you'll be in this home. It's one hundred and one, not a differentiator, not disruptive. Hey, asking people how old they want to be when their homes paid off. That's different. That's disruptive. That's that helps you deliver advice. It makes them stop and think. That's what we're really trying to accomplish because we've been brainwashed in society to think, you know, when I decide to buy or refinance a home, I just need the lowest rate. Right? And so that's really all they're trying to accomplish. And because so many people are not educated in this industry in terms of helping a client, people just quote low rates all day long. So when a client comes across someone who's trying to talk about more than just low rate, sometimes they feel like you're just trying to not answer the question right and they're right. like i just want to worry. I just want they they've been you know kind of programmed to just keep asking the question so when you interrupt that thought process with something disruptive that's when they open up and start thinking okay maybe i should stop pretending i know it all because i obviously don't this guy's asking me questions that i haven't thought of. Yeah. yeah no no doubt and and guys please put those questions in i know questions just as simple as you know what are what are your goals you know as we meet here today What's your, what are your real estate goals? You know, obviously we want to buy this home, but where do you want to be in three years? Where do you want to be in seven years? Where do you want to be in 15 years? And then if they're not clear, like, do you want to own a second home? Do you want to own investment properties? You know, having that, what is your real estate goal? What are your real estate plans? That is a black belt question. Now, what you do with that question, you may not be a black belt. Just if you ask that question, doesn't mean you're a black belt. You have to take that question, and then you have to deliver value. And then you have to do it year after year, month after month. And we'll, we'll close out on that. Yeah. So, so Ryan, let's jump into this um, challenge and sale conversation. Uh, my new favorite book. Yeah, new favorite book. It's uh, a favorite book of mine. I'm going to show it on my screen real quick. For anyone that's heard me talk about this before, um, sorry. I'm going to keep talking about it. And, and here's the deal. I've, I've read this book. I don't even know how many times I've read this book. I've listened to the audio book. So even if you've heard this, I would, I would ask you to take some notes on it right now and then audit your process. And then for those of you that haven't heard this, call it three minute conversation we're gonna have right now, uh, take notes. This is, this is game changing. This is a book and the way I've characterized it, it's like the good to great for sale. Yeah. Really. Because they, they took with like 5,000 um, top sales people. Yeah, across Different industries. Seven, 70 different industries. 70 different industries like ADP, yeah. which are known to be like the best sales guys ever, right. guys and gals. Um, so multiple industries, best salespeople. And then they, they came up with these personas, um, these categories of people. And, and here's the deal. We know someone who's a top producer because they're a hard worker. And, and I do think almost all top producers are hard workers. Yeah, I mean, they're hard workers, they're team hard. I mean, they, they figure out how to do more in less time. They, you know, they, some people just work 15, 16 hours a day to, right. but I think it, you know, doing, being a hard worker, you almost have to do that to make up for the fact that you're may not be a challenger. Right. right? So well, let's not get to the challenger yeah. yet. Um, some people are super successful because of relationship builders. That's their superpower. Some people are super successful because of problem solvers. And here's the deal in the mortgage business, two kinds of deals, deals with problems, deals with solve problems. So we have to solve problems and we have to do it effectively and efficiently. Some are successful because they're the little wolf. And then here's the deal. Some are successful because they are the 
challenge the sales rep. Now, I think the, the, the deal was the majority of the best of the best wore um, challenger sales. By a mile. By a mile. And then there was a category here that came in second, and there was a category that came in last. So I'd ask everybody right now, just pause for a second, and write down out of challengers number one, no you know, secret there, but who came in last and who came in second? Ryan, you want to unveil? Yeah, so it was shocking to me because we all believe that this business is based on relationships, but relationships came in dead last. Um, you know, so when you think about the successful salespeople, even, even though I don't love the term sales, uh, because I don't believe what we do is selling, I believe it's advising and consulting, the relationship is important, but not nearly as important as challenging the assumption that the, the consumers is right in their assessment of what they're trying to do. Um, I don't remember who came in second. Was it the no, it was Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. Yeah, the Lone Wolf came in second. Here's the deal, guys. You can't scale and build a team around the, the Lone Wolf. You can't build systems and processes because they're just, you know, they're just, they got this magic way that they do things. Right. But they came in second. They were yeah. badass. So, so does anybody want to know what made the challenger rep the challenger rep? Like, what were the character traits? What were the skills of the challenger rep? Here it is, guys. So, so, so number one, and no secret, they tailor, they personalize, they localize. Yeah. Um, so we'll talk more about the localization. Uh, number two, they teach, and that kind of speaks to your whole point, you won't like calling us salespeople. Right. The best salespeople aren't salespeople. They tailor and they teach. And I think this is where the relationship building is left in the best, is that the relationship builder is a people pleaser. They, yes, 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 yes. They don't control. They don't yeah, they, leave. I think the, the quote was, you know, they fit into other people's comfort levels as opposed to creating discomfort in challenging conversations. Yeah. And that's that's so true. I mean, think about your relationship with real estate agents, your relationship with your clients. A lot of times you acquiesce to whatever they want it to do and you kind of become a yes man because you feel like it's good for the relationship. In contrast, as as the study showed us, you know, challenging that assessment and teaching them something they didn't know. And you know, having that kind of what you'll show is wrapped around in you know, constructive tension. Constructive tension. This is where it's at, and this is and this is where the whole game changes. So write this down, guys. TTC. If you want to be a black belt in mortgage device, you need to master TTE. You know, tailor, teach, control. This is the target to teach something that hadn't been considered. And if and if you really are a people pleaser, and I like the way you said that there. They're so focused on just giving people what they ask for, what they want, right. but they don't, they don't challenge them to get to something that they hadn't considered. And then, and then here's the other deal. You need to teach them something that they will always remember. And so, I'll, you know, it's called the star moment. It's S for something, P for them, A for always, R for remember. Something they'll always remember. And I, I do think this is, this is how you become the capital world. 100%. And it's how... It, it's and strangely enough, it's how you build a more significant relationship right? because they will they will be more open to hearing from you in the future. They will want to hear from you. They will you know reach out to make sure that what they're doing is correct and they'll run ideas by you. And you guys will proactively work together for thirty plus years because you've taught them something they've always remembered and they know to come back to you. So by being a challenger sale, you actually enhance the relationship. Yeah, and that that's a faster path to relationships, right? Because here's the deal, it, people will shop you less, people will respect you faster if they trust you and if they respect you. And like here is a perfect example of that story. Like if you had a family member, a brother or sister who got in the mortgage business, you trust them with your life, but they just got in the mortgage business. You don't necessarily respect them as a mortgage professional. Right. You're going to shop them. You're not going to let them know that you shop them. But you're going to shop them. Right, at, the, at the same time, let's just say there's this loan officer. He's on billboards. You know he's the market leader. You know he's a badass. You respect him. But you know what? You don't know that he has your best interests in mind. What do you do? You shop him. Yeah. But if those two things collide, trust and respect, authority, well, you're not going to shop. Right. And, and, and here's the deal. We live in the world of, of Zillow owns a mortgage company. Redfin owns a mortgage company. Everybody always knows what rates are, so we're always getting shot. But if we have that trust, respect, and then the way that we deliver advice at the point of sale, 
the way that we, you know, deliver the art of ownership, home ownership over time, they're going to want to do business with you. There's going to be a magnet that I want to do business with you yeah. because it's more than a transaction. Um, so anything else you want to say before we get into the paradigm of what is a black belt? No, I just think that when, you, when you're talking about, you know, why a client will ultimately work with you, they just need to see value in what you do, right? They need to see, you know, trust and respect are great, relationships are great, uh, all these things are really important. But at the end of the day, we have to choose, right? We're either going to be the cheapest in this business or we're going to be the most valuable in this business. And I think right now we're confusing value with service and speed and a lot of the things that we talk about that really don't differentiate ourselves at all. So the star moments, the you know, constructive tension, the helping people, you know, teaching them things that they'll always know, those things create value. And the key there is then the longevity. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's finish the, call it the, the playbook to Black Belt. Now let's talk about this. I'll jump in if there are questions that have come into either Zoom or Facebook Live. I will look at those while Ryan is addressing that. But let's let's just finish the, the playbook here. So so here's here's what I've gone through so far. Is that if you want to be an orange belt in advice, it's just deliver the star versus the triangle. It's pretty straightforward. Um, however, if you want to elevate, if you want to become that brown belt, there's some things that you could do around it, such as put a video on it. You know, deliver using technology to deliver a, a richer or more valuable educational experience. Um, knowing when to put a video on it, knowing when to put an audio on it. I mean, I think all these tools and all these technologies that we have now, it's like I would I would use I, I like to just keep it on, you know, martial arts, but I'm gonna go to golf real quick and think of it as like different clubs in my golf bag. First of all, with every single hole you let me go to and so part of it is just knowing which club to use with which client and with which sales situation. But if you want to be a brown belt and you want to elevate beyond just orange belt, you need to lo learn how to use technology. When to put a video, when to put an audio, when to do a live. At Mortgage Coach, we power all three of these channels. But then there's other technologies that you can use outside of Mortgage Coach, um, like Zoom, the platform I'm using right now. There's time to like pull out the Zoom golf, golf club. There are email video platforms, you know, like BombBomb and other videos. There's a time to say, hey, I want to do a video. I want to track when they watch it. I want to send it out to a lot of people. Uh, and then what I advocate a lot in today's market is text video. You know, there is a time to just put your phone against the wall and leave a video for a financial planner or for a realtor. Anything you want to add to that before I go to the next thing? I think all those just, you know, you're basically, you know, a lot of people think technology replaces connection. These are all examples of technology enhancing connection, right? Because they personalize you more, they make it more uh, emotionally connected to them because people are very bad audio, 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 auditory learners, right? mm -hmm. but they're really great visual learners, right? So when you can walk them through the visual of the PCA, kind of explain it, whether it's live, video, audio, in person, one of the Yeah, so, so think of the, the, the star is, financial strategies as a mortgage professional. Yeah, we got to deliver transactions, which is cash to close and monthly payment. But if you want to differentiate, you want to be an advisor, we got to deliver cost over time. And then we need to use technology. An omni-channel we, we took from the retail industry. And um, I mean, like you work for Nordstrom's, you've been obsessing over this term, WACD, what Amazon can do. And, and like Nordstrom's, while they're very high value, high service, installed experience, there is a lot of technology that's wrapping that. Like you come into a Nordstrom and they don't have what you want, they're like, I can have that at your house tomorrow. Right. You know, they're, they're giving the consumer, you want to buy things online and then come to the store and try it on and talk to someone. They're giving you what you want, however you want it, you know, in their live experience, internet, mobile, Omnichannel. And, and again, in the mortgage business, sometimes Omnichannel is just bring it out. There are family members that within a family, there may be one family that wants everything on their mobile device and will be irritated if you call them, it's like text, mobile. There may be another family member that's willing to drive 20 minutes to get a piece of paper from you. You know, um, Omnichannel, give people what the way they want it. And then this is definitely not last but not least, and we believe that mortgage coach, this is the cornerstone of mortgage advice, you're always giving people options. When they pick the option, they pick the loan option. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, from a 
option perspective, you want people choosing between option A, B, or C, not between lender A, B, or C, right? And so if you're only giving them one option and everyone else is giving them that same option, then it's a pretty straight comparison because nobody's taught them anything or had them look at the analysis any differently. So from an option perspective, it's an absolute necessity. And I'm shocked at how many people still don't do that. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy. So so mortgage coach community, if you're watching this, I would just, you know, rate yourself. How are you at doing this? Are you a brown belt or an orange belt? Are, are you showing up for families as a white belt? I mean, we, we still live in a white belt economy in the mortgage business, but that is not how you optimize your success. And that is definitely not how you optimize the value that you give to a family. And, and guys, I get asked all the time, what is a black belt? A black belt is when you can do all of these moves, you can use all these gap golf clubs, and you can do it in every selling situation. Whether it's a first time home buyer, whether it's a move up buyer, whether it's a cash out refi, whether it's a rate and term refi, it's like you're able to do this. And then in mortgage coach land, we believe that it's when you've done it 300 times or more. Like you've created a total cost analysis for 300 or more families, you are a mortgage coach black belt. Anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, just the repetition behind it is going to give you so much, so much more of an advantage because you know you can teach this stuff, but as we all know, the best way to learn is just through doing it, right? So getting engaged with the client, asking the right questions, and then under you know, taking the answers to those questions in and being able to then deliver a you know a suite of options available to them based upon the information we've given you is really where the whole black belt advice comes in. It's, and we can, if someone, I can ask Dave normal 1003 questions, and then I can give him a you know total cost analysis with three different options. That still wouldn't make me a black belt because I didn't ask the right questions, and then I didn't take internalize that data and think, okay, these are the best options for him based on everything they told me. Uh, so that's really where you, you separate yourself. Yeah. So a couple more slides, and then we'll be about half well, we're right at the halfway point. Uh, but I really want to, I want to make sure you guys get the tactics. And then we're going to get into an actual TCA. So, so here's the other thing that's beautiful, is that when you become that black belt in mortgage advice, you actually have a value proposition with real estate agents that goes beyond a lot of people. You can actually say to a realtor, my advice helps your buyer save clarity faster, gives them a greater sense of urgency, and then that translates into improved conversion. Yeah. So you go from being... The transactional loan officer that, hey, I can close loans, keep promises, so to a lot of people, to on the conversion part. Yeah. And, and but again, you've got to be a black belt in mortgage advice to say this. So it's it's all about going from white belt, be worksheet, not teaching, not blowing people's minds, to black belt. Anything you want to add to that? Yeah, if you haven't already asked your realtor partners or any realtor for that matter, you know, let's say you're going after Dave's the top agent in the marketplace and I want to I want to try and earn his business. My question to Dave would be, Dave, when you refer a client to Bob who you're working with currently, do you know exactly what that process looks like from the first phone call to 50 years later as you walk you through that? And every single time that they're gonna say no, you're gonna say, Well, what you might what you, you might want to consider is Bob may not be doing a good enough job at removing the fear and the anxiety and the uncertainty around home ownership because he may not have the best presentation software to be able to create the clarity and to be able to help motivate clients to do the right thing. So if you're hearing, I'm not ready, it's not the right time, I'm gonna save more money, I'm gonna rent for a year, if that's a fairly common thing after theme after people get pre-approved, it's not the client's fault. It's probably the mortgage advisor's fault for telling the client what they can do as opposed to educating them as to what they should do. So if you have time, Dave, come to the office, I'd love to show you what the difference between a normal mortgage finance looks like and why when our clients leave our office, they're they're probably gonna call you by the time you hit the elevator to go look at them home. That's the difference. Love that, love that. So remember guys, if you have questions for Ryan, bring them to us. If, uh, well, no one from Sales Mastery is gonna be watching this. Uh, if you were in Sales Mastery and you're watching this afterwards, let us know. But guys, I wanna walk you through just an example and mutual friend of ours. Yep. Black belt at mortgage coach Josh Metal. Um, I want you to just think, put yourself in this situation. If you were a family and you talk to your loan officer, now in Josh's case, most of his clients are all online. They never come into his office. And you have 
the majority come through the United right. States. So Josh does it. So he talks to them, and then he leaves like a 30-second video. And that video is doing two things. One, it's creating personal connection. And two, it's giving direction on how that family can quickly and efficiently do business. We'll see how this looks. Yeah, Josh, we're really good at mortgage. We've got a great buddy, Nori, who I can name, and uh, personal credential. I will send you next my personal contact card. Please save that. Service, so value, text digital this. friends. This is probably a way to get a hold of me most of the time. So, uh, so feel free if you need me after hours on the weekend, shoot me a text that way. I'm here for you. I'll also time. then send you a text message with a link to the Fairway Now Directions. Uh, the great little tool. Further making them a digital the friend. Download the mobile easy app. Easy to do business with. Store. Easy to do transactions. Launch the app and click on the client questionnaire. Once you complete the client questionnaire, that data is transfer over to me. As I said, it's preliminary information. I'll, I'll backfill anything that you missed. Just fill it out to the best of your ability. Probably shouldn't take you more than 10 or 15 minutes from the mobile device, and then we'll jump in and get going from there. If you could also send me a copy of the purchase agreement, that would be great. My email is josh efficient. at joshmetal.com. Using mobile. Also be a contact card I send you, and uh, we'll be in contact with you soon. Take care, buddy. So, so then guys, here's the script. A couple of you have already asked for these slides. Yeah, we will put a link to these slides after the call. Um, you can take a screenshot of the script. So this is what he does. I've interviewed Jeremy Corsi on this. I'm sure you had your version of this. Any comments on that before we go to like connect, video, any, any comments? Yeah, I mean, he, what he was doing there is he was kind of imparting all five of those different, you know, different roles in the challenger sale. Like, you know, he, he was working on, you know, obviously hardworking, right? Doing what he's supposed to be doing. Um, you know, doing the relationship building piece with the connection, doing the uh, the problem solver piece with text me anytime, all that stuff. But the big thing he's going to do is going to be the challenger part of it. Is that's going to be showing them different options and teaching them things. And so, you know, it, it, it's it's awesome how he encompasses that all into the one thirty second video. Yeah, well, check this out, guys. So here here is the full play again. Just a black belt in action, delivers that point of sale, makes it easy to do business. And then, of course, he, you know, is, is delivering that experience. And what do you see at the bottom? They're getting a total cost analysis. You know, the client then clicks on that total cost analysis. Whatever device that client's at, if they look at it on a mobile device, they're getting out on mobile. If they click on it from a desktop, they're getting desktop. Guys, this is the experience. Tailor, teach, control. And a perfect example of that. So, so hopefully everybody watching this, you guys are getting just like play book yeah. questions. By the way, did you say you were going to get us those twelve um, disruptive yeah, questions? So link down below to those. I'll integrate it. Super cool. You can now integrate social survey into a mortgage coach TCA. So where they're getting advice, you can stream the video, and you can put your TCAs. So so that is. That is how you deliver advice. I think we could go on with tactics. What haven't we covered? And then I know when you and I were doing some prep, yeah. we talked about Dave is black belt the highest. Yeah. You know what? We and we agreed we're going to have this grand master. And I know one thing for sure because we have so many top producers in our community that have done a thousand TCAs. From a mortgage coach perspective, grand master is going to be you've done a thousand TCAs. So from your perspective, what are some other considerations? to either be a black belt. Black belt or grand master? Do both. Give your definition of what a black belt is or what a grand master is. Yeah, so I think a black belt is somebody who will commit to the consumer that they're not just going to help them with the transaction, but they're going to help them for 30 plus years. And a very proactive, you know, very engaged, very meaningful and valuable way. And the, the step that you want to take next is going to be, okay, how do I actually do that? Right? Because I think a lot of people talk about client for life and they say client for life. And some people may have you know, an email drip campaign. They may have, you know, videos that they send, they may do a, an annual call. Um, but unless you really actually have a platform to commit to the long term, you know, value that the client is really going to need and going to look for as their life changes and evolves, I think that combined with consistency and the number of TCAs you've done, that is going to be, where you are considered a grandmaster, right? So that's the step up from black belt. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I, I would say is, I mean, I really think to even be a brown belt, you need to deliver consistency. I mean, that is yeah. that is what distinguishes 
um, good to great yeah. is consistency. Yeah. And I, so I, I would just throw out there, I think, and I don't know how we're going to do this at Mortgage Coast because we are rolling out some gamification. Some of this stuff we could just give, um, I don't know, what do they call them? Um, Certificates? Yeah, well, it's going to be in the product. So, you know, they're going to have, um, what's that term? I'll think of it in a minute. But like, in, yeah, well, in the product, you're going to have like these little awards oh, yeah. within. You'll, you'll have badges. And, badges. And, and badges. Boom. That was the term I was looking for. You'll have these badges. And so what we can measure, I don't know that we can measure how consistent you are, but I'll tell you what, you can measure how consistent you are. And, and I don't even think you're a brown belt if you're not doing it consistently. To me, hearing you talk, and just the more I've got to meet you yeah. and interview you, to me where you really, what you've done, and you really are, Todd, the, the theme is fit, fast, and forward, and you're the model for that. No, oh, thank you. And then, and then I would think um, the other thing that you've been the model for, at least as I've interviewed you now multiple times, is while you have done, you've been obsessive, and you've created this great point of sale consumer experience, yeah. dude, you have changed on the after sale experience. Yeah. And to me, that's like when you make your post-sale experience your number one priority, which it appears to me that you have. 100%. Yeah, you've made that your number one priority. That is disruptive. Yeah. So why don't you kind of walk people through that? I know we've got um, Art of Homeownership website. I'll pull it up when I think it's on point. Yeah. But, but Ryan's just a great example. You know, I've been preaching forever. Guys, you got to do annual reviews. But after listening to Ryan, I mean, the annual review, that's just one golf club. Right in the golf bag of how do you serve a client post-sale? Yeah, it's, it's been the, you know, we, again, we surveyed all of our clients and over 75% of them said that they chose to work with us because of our commitment to help them after the transaction, not because we had the lowest rate or because we had great service. Um, you know, we try and have as competitive and as low as rate as we possibly can. You know, we deliver what I would consider an unparalleled customer service experience. But even that being said, that's not enough value to overcome the fact that they could quote unquote save money by using a cheaper product. And so from a value perspective, you know, we've created the art of home ownership that allows us a, a tool to be able to very systematically show the consumer, this is what your life will look like after the transaction. And this is why you're going to need us involved, right? Because when someone buys a home, they're a, they're a snapshot. If right. Dave buys a home today, I'm going to take a picture. He's going to look a certain way. He's going to have a certain amount of money. His family is going to be a certain you know, structure. But then all that stuff will change. He'll make more money. He'll make less money. He'll go into debt. He'll come out of debt. He'll inherit property. He may inherit his parents. There's a lot that's going to happen in the life of the client. Right. And if we're considering ourselves grandmasters in this art, right, which is helping people with home ownership, we need a platform that we can deliver to the consumer that gives them consistent value year after year, day after day, week after week, month after month. And, and that's what we're excited to, to offer. So real quick, and I'm going to show you what's happening in a minute here, but how do you verbalize that at the point of sale? You said that a lot of people do business with you because of what they perceive as the value of sale. Yeah. So give, give, give me the one minute script. Yep. And then let's walk through just high level for five minutes you know, what they're getting. So what's the one minute script? Yeah, so we, we train on this on the article ownership platform. Essentially, the, the script to the consumer is, you know, Mr. Smith, one of the things that makes us unique is how we help our clients before they buy a home, how we help them during, and how we help them after. You know, we talk about the before piece, which is, you know, fully underwriting, helping them get an offer accepted, you know, making sure they really understand that, you know, the education, the analysis, the setup, and the structure is all really well, really great, right? And that's, that's a lot of what most people focus on. Uh, oh, I would say most of the mortgage coach community focuses on. Uh, then you can get the 10%, which I would consider you know, the, during the transaction. That's just doing what we're supposed to do at a high level, making sure we reduce stress, making sure everything goes well. But where we are most valuable to you is going to be from the time you close to 30 plus years forward. And when you come in the office, we'll fully explain that. We'll walk you through our platform. Uh, but our commitment to you is that we're going to make you and save you more money than anybody else in your life when it comes to real estate and finance. And we are going to help you grow your generational wealth. We're going to help you save money. And we're going to help you proactively plan through real estate and goals for the future. Um, so we're excited to walk you through that when you get into the office and we'll go from there. Boom. But we, we could end this. And we should really just, let's dissect that. Yeah. One to 30 years. Yeah. You know, so when you talk to a family, are you talking about how I'm going to help you 
over the next month, get into the degree loan you want, and how I'm going to help you over the next 30 years? Probably not. Um, are, are you actually being so bold is to say that that's the most valuable thing? Like, the transaction is not the most valuable thing I can provide. The, the what I'm going to do for you over the next 30 years is where the value is. That's powerful. Yeah. Anything else you want to call out? Because like, you have a lot of, I, I, I'm going to edit this and I'm going to put this in our, our um, IG TV. So guys, everybody in the mortgage coach community, we're looking for more ways that we can distribute our content and help you grow as a mortgage planner. So we've got YouTube. We now have IGTV, so this will be available in Instagram. Um, a 10-minute highlight of this, which this script right here will be included in that. And then I've got a podcast coming up. But I want you to break that down. Like, you know, there was the promise at the front end. You'll notice the total cost analysis was part of that promise. Um, but break down everything that you said there a little bit more. Uh, the before, during, after? Or yeah, that just that script that you just yeah. did. It was like, about a minute. Yeah. So if you look at your value to consumer as 100% scale, we feel, we feel that 30% of our value to the consumer is before the transaction starts. It's the education, it's the analysis, it's helping them become more confident in their ability to buy or sell or move up or refinance, whatever they were planning on doing. It's helping them maximize their purchase price, helping them you know, get an offer at the lowest price they can. It's helping them, you know, we have a 72% offer acceptance rate compared to a 16% market acceptance rate. Um, so we really dive into the before part, right? But then we say only really 10% of our value to you is going to be during the transaction because doing the actual mortgage is not that difficult, right? It's just collecting paperwork, it's collecting documentation, it's setting proper expectations, it's hitting certain timelines, it's ensuring we reduce your stress, it's making sure that you have what we consider a transformational experience to allow you to appreciate the joy of buying a home, right? Where most people experience a lot of stress in buying a home. And then when it really becomes important is the fact that, Dave, I'm not sure if you're aware, but and we'll pull up on our screen. Here's a list of about 17 questions that you're going to ask yourself or you should ask yourself daily, weekly, monthly, and annually. Would you feel confident asking yourself these questions? No, I wouldn't. No, even if you asked yourself a few of them, would you feel confident knowing the answers? No, not really. And this isn't you knowing everything about your life today. We, we know your life will change in a year or two years or three years. So, when your life has those evolutions, how comfortable will you be at that point? I'd be even less confident, right? So we really get the client to understand there's a lot more left that they need to do. Right? There's a lot more left they need to plan for. There's a lot more left. I mean, this will not be their last home. It will not be their last mortgage, right? So we really get them to focus on, yeah, there's a lot more I need here, right? And I could save $20, $40, $80 a month, potentially, if I go the cheap route. But how much is that going to cost me over time by missing out on opportunities, by not doing the right thing, by not forward planning, um, by not looking at everything holistically? And so when the client gets done, we've done a really good job of getting them to understand, yeah, we need this. Right? This is what we need. Right? Anybody can give me a mortgage. He's right. right. But no one's committed to helping me and my family and my extended family for 30 plus years and then shown me how they're actually going to do it. And maybe, maybe one or two people may have said, oh, we're going to help you for years to come in passing. But if they press that question and said, well, how are you going to help me for 30 years to come? I, my, my guess is that nobody would know the answer to that. Nobody would have a response. So, so let me break this down to all the, the leaders in the mortgage industry, all the branch managers, everybody who's really nerding out on your business right now. What I just heard is like the playbook that I believe in. I think it's why we're getting yeah. along so well. We're, creating some really good content together is we really, we've come from two different places. I mean, Brian's not been on Mortgage Coach for 10 years. No. I mean, it's fairly no. new, but we, we kind of came from where you came from. I came from where I came from, yep. but we both believe this. Like this is the typical loan officer experience. And you'll notice that the red is the transaction. And that's where most loan officers value themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how they justify the commissions that they make, the comps that they do. And, and here's the reality that we believe. We believe that the transaction, whether you want it to or not, loan officers out there, it's becoming commoditized. It's becoming more automated. And, and that, that's why Zillow's in the mortgage business that right now. That's why Redfin's in. That's why sooner or later, Amazon's going to be in the mortgage business because the transaction itself, it's getting faster, easier, and more automated. And what I just heard you say is that you're justifying a lot, 30% of your value, what happens pre, that advice piece. And then you're 
putting the majority of your value on the back end. What happens in this client for life piece? So, so guys, I mean, here's a little history lesson on how loan officers have been quoting rates for 40 years now. In 1998, this is what it looked like to quote rates. And coming out of the 70s, you know, I started in the 70s. Coming out of the 70s, this is what it looked like a yellow sheet of paper. But 10 years later, no change. This is how the mortgage industry quotes rates, delivers an educational experience, you know, coming through the meltdown. We did get the product and pricing engine in the 2000s, but here we are, we're in 2019, and this is how most loan officers are still delivering that point of sale experience, which if it's done right, it's, it's more valuable than the transaction itself. So, so I'm very passionate that every family gets options, every family gets it with technology in an omni-channel way, first time home buyer at a pizza coffee shop, self-educating in an omni-channel way. Uh, families still love to come into offices, you know, give it to them in an omni-channel way. So, right, I think this is a perfect segue. We got 10 minutes left. Yeah. Why don't you spend five minutes and walk people through art of home ownership? Just because I think the way you've laid this out on your website, this is brilliant. And then of course, he's packaging it in a super compelling visual way that's online and he can take a client through. And then he's delivering it. And again, for that, tell them what you do, yeah. how to do it, have them come to one of your webinars. Yeah. But why don't you just walk through this real quick? Yeah, so the Art of Home Ownership essentially is a platform that allows us to not only commit these really valuable services to the consumer, but they allow us to deliver the really valuable services to the consumer. So first thing we do is they get a home concierge service. Our commitment to them is that we're going to help them proactively maintain their home at a high level and actually increase that home's value over time. Um, again, the assumption is that when someone buys the most significant asset in their life, when they have the most significant debt in their life, that they know all the things they're supposed to do moving forward. Uh, and somebody coined it really well the other day when they said, what would happen if your check engine light didn't come on in your car or service needed light didn't come on in your car? Would you know to take your car in? Would you know what to do? So there's car technology that tells you, hey, you need to get this service. This needs to be updated. It's 10,000 miles and so on and so forth. But there's nothing from a housing perspective that does that. So we wanted to deliver that to the consumer. So one of our first commitments is we're going to help you make sure that this asset that you're buying and paying a lot of money for is really kept at a high level, maintained at a high level, and it's actually growing in value over time. And then when you ultimately sell it, you're going to get the highest value possible because of the home concierge service. So someone will come to their home, they'll do a 300 point data analysis of the property, they will you know, measure everything, they'll keep all the information online, and then every week the consumer is going to get a really important email like, hey, time to change your air filter, by the way, here's the one you need. Kind of like your check engine car light, right? So we're, we're teaching them proactively how to maintain their home at a high level. And then when they go to sell that home, all the vendor contact information, paint colors, carpet type, receipts for all the work they've done. The, the buyer will see that, so they'll see how well the home is maintained, they'll be able to then adopt it, and then ultimately you know, create a higher value for the home. Uh, next thing they get is a monthly real estate wealth digest. This is something that we really believe in. Most consumers not only don't know the value of their home, because there's six different websites that have six different values, but they don't know their net worth through their home because they don't even look at their mortgage statements. So every month we give them an analysis that shows exactly what their net worth is, and it gives them a lot of financial analytics. Uh, our clients open it at over 100%, right? So we, we send out about 1,500 of them and we get about 1,580 opens, right? Which means that a lot of people are just opening it twice. Um, so that's really important. And again, our commitment to them is that we're gonna help them proactively. In our world, we feel, feel like a grand master of the mortgage industry or a mortgage advisor, is that if someone calls you and says, I wanna buy a home, I wanna refinance a home, I wanna sell, I wanna buy an investment property, and they're one of your past clients, that's an automatic failure. Right? Because in our world, we believe that we should help the client decide to buy, sell, or finance real estate. We should know what's happening in their life, and we should help them plan for whatever that next transactional moment may be. Uh, and this is really, really helps with that to, to help you know, make sure the client knows what to plan for and what to look for. Uh, next thing is a financial review. So a lot of people call them annual mortgage reviews. I think that really cheapens what we actually do here because most people would think, well, my mortgage is fine. I don't need to be reviewed. No big deal. So we call it an annual financial review because we don't just review the mortgage. We review their entire holistic financial situation. We talk about generational wealth planning. We talk about estate planning, insurance protection, you know, retirement planning overall, maximizing tax benefits, 
we really dive into every section and we figure, okay, here's what our advice would be. Here's what we need to do. Here's what we're planning for. Here's our future real estate goals. Uh, so our clients have really come to depend upon that. And when you can tell someone you're going to call them and give them advice and guidance and not sell them anything, it really helps. Uh, last couple things, just to well, be, let you do that. I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to pile on yeah. first before you do that. Um, that one particular thing called the annual review, the mortgage review, what exactly do you call it? Annual financial review. Annual financial review. Wally Elderberry, who's going to be speaking on stage at Sales Mastery um, tomorrow, maybe today. Uh, I interviewed him in, last year. At the end of last year, I interviewed him early this year. But in 2017, he came to Sales Mastery. He's like, the one thing I'm going to start doing is doing annual reviews. And at that time, super successful mortgage practice. I think he did about $80 million that year. 21 of the loans that he closed out of the, I don't know, over 300, 300 yeah. 400 were from past customers. He implemented doing annual mortgage reviews powered by Mortgage Coach, and it went to 81. So in 2008, he did 81 past client loans, just that one particular channel. And now I interviewed him last Tuesday, so he was my guest last Tuesday, and we called it becoming the captain of the wealth team because he really is, like this year, his number one, two top priorities were one, he was measuring and counting how many referrals he was giving back to his past clients, or excuse me, to his partners, CPAs, financial planners. I'm sure you're doing the same thing. Yeah. And, and, and but continue to do annual reviews and then broadening the financial advisors. So first of all, if you like what we're talking about, just that one strategy can be life-changing and game-changing. So, and check out last week's interview. If you want to become a black belt in mortgage advice, um, it was a great, great call. Anyways, yeah. continue. Yeah, so then we just get into perfect mortgage promise. And this is kind of the questions I had talked about when you know we show our clients, hey, you're gonna ask yourself all of these questions, you know, once you buy a home and would you feel comfortable knowing the answer? And this is what we really get the client to consider. Wouldn't it be better if I could just rest assured that I'm always in the right position because my mortgage team is gonna make sure that I am? Like if they're always thinking about these questions for me and they're putting the questions in front of me and they're helping me form the answers to the questions and plan for them that's a much better value than me having to figure all this out on my own because I probably won't and I'm going to miss out on some opportunities by doing that. And the last thing is just helping people maximize wealth through real estate. And that is helping people understand accessory dwelling units, garage conversions, granny flats, casitas. We help one client figure out how he can convert five of his investment property garages into living space. He made $1,500 on average more per unit, which was $90,000 more per year in income because of our advice on one of our annual reviews. So when our clients find, when I say you're gonna find more value in working with us than anybody else, it's because we can deliver on this platform and we marry technology and personal advice uh, in a very easy, uh, consistent and, and deliverable way without you know, burying us in too much additional work. So we've got just a couple minutes left of the two, I'm gonna put two samples of Ryan's total cost analysis down below. Just give us a minute on one yeah. of these. Which one would you want to do? You want to do this one, which is the, name? Uh, uh, the name is family planning. Yeah. So we can do the family planning one. Or, or this one, Nick Jones. Yeah. Uh, the family planning one, I think, is apt because it, it's part of our homeownership. So, so tell me what we're doing. Yeah. When we talk to our clients, we always ask, you know, tell me about your parents. And you talk about generational family planning for parents, and most people have not. Uh, and so in this particular case, we had a client who, you know, their parents were going to have to figure out what to do because they were going to hit retirement and not have enough money to stay in their current property. So as opposed to buying a $650,000 house with, you know, that would have been a little bit more comfortable from a monthly payment perspective, they realized they could buy the 950 house. They could use some of the additional funds that mom and dad are going to have by selling their unaffordable home, put as a down payment. Mom mom and dad would be able to deliver $2,000 a month in rent as opposed to their $4,000 a month housing payment. So, and then we show them how they could reinvest that back into, you know, back into the home and how quickly they can have it paid off and how much more money they'd have. Right. So not only do we get their, them to understand that their wow. family is going to need some help moving forward. Almost a million dollars more in right. net worth at the end of, uh, and they've helped their parents at the same time. Right. Yeah, so yeah. not only are you financially benefiting, but you're, you're benefiting your family in a very, good way. Now, if they would have, if we wouldn't have asked the right questions, and if we wouldn't have kind of helped them see the future, they probably would have bought the 650 house. And then they would have had to either sold it or help their parents buy a new home or really been in a tough spot. 
because they didn't think of just a few years down the line. So guys, every time you meet with a family, you show the transactional details, you show monthly graphically, you show the cost over different windows of time, you give them options. And again, this is a perfect example of the star of advice. Put both links down below. So guys, I am super dedicated to your success. That's why doing interviews like this is one of the top three things I do. The CEO of Mortgage Coach, all these interviews are available on our YouTube channel. So for all of you guys that said, hey Dave, is this gonna be on the YouTube channel? Yeah, it's gonna be on the YouTube channel. Um, if you click on any of these links, you'll always notice down below, there are some like show notes. And so any links, I'll put a link down below to the slides. I'll put a link down below to some of Ryan's stuff. Um, if you guys wanna become a black belt and mortgage coach, you know, first of all, there's a lot of resources we have at Mortgage Coach, but one of them is if you go to Lender Services and you go to Mortgage Coach Strategies, think of this as like an optical course where every strategy, you know how I show like you need to do all these things, get all these strategies? Well, I've got an interview for all of them. So these are all ballers, really powerful, successful, Denise Donahue, Josh Metal, we'll get you in here. Yeah. Where there's an interview, so you get the scripts and the strategies. And if you click on one of these, you know, not only will you get the interview with Craig Strength, you know that when it comes to having the 30 versus 15 year mortgage for a financial planner, no one's better than Craig. Yeah. I mean, this That's is crazy. this is his money. And all within that, there's a link to a TCA. So go through here and become a pro. I want to remind you guys, for those of you that do use Instagram, I, I love Instagram. We now have videos. They're less than 10 minutes long. Some of them, like this one with uh, T Top Realtor on the East Coast, we took 10 minutes of an hour interview. There's Shayla Gifford, one of my, I don't know if Shayla might win. You know, it's gonna be between you and Shayla for the top interview of 2019. Uh, took 10 minutes of her video, we put it on here. Uh, Bill Hart and I were at a conference, and we just did a quick 10 minute rant. So every week there will be videos on here. And then of course, if you're on this call and you are not part of our Facebook group, become part of our Facebook group, check it out. So right, two last ask. One, remember to give us those questions. Yeah. Two, for anyone that wants to learn more about the art of homeownership, yeah. one, will you put a link down below? Yep. So, so guys, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel and Facebook, there'll be a link down below. Where do they go to get more? Yeah, just go to artofhomeownership.com. If you're a mortgage professional, just click on that tab up top and then you can fill in your information. We'll invite you to one of our webinars. We have one of them per week. Uh, if you want one and you can't make it, we have them recorded so we can always email them to you and you can watch them. Uh, and then if you're interested in learning more about signing up, we can help you with that. Uh, and you can also invite your real estate professionals and real estate partners to be on that call with you because it is a platform for real estate professionals. So a lot of lenders will bring their real estate professionals on because that I mean, the power of both of you using it is really what it's meant for. Cool, guys. Yeah. So hopefully you got value. If you got value, give us a like, whatever channel you're in. If you loved it, love it. Share it with your mortgage friends. Dude, appreciate you, man. Yeah, thanks for your time. Take care, everybody. Have, Have a great day. This is a wrap.